Hi everyone, so in this video I'm going to share with you guys my uh, brand new recipe binder that I just set up inside my kitchen that I'm really happy the way it turned out. So I'm going to share with you guys what I did, what products I used, and some lessons learned, like mistakes that I made that you can avoid making um, if you do the same binder, if you set up the same binder inside your kitchen for your recipes. So before I show you the binder, I just want to say that um, before I had the binder, I was using... I had like a recipe organizer. It was functional, but it wasn't like super organized, like the way I like things. Um, but it, it was working, but at the same time I had like maybe like four or five recipe books that I was never using. Like the recipe books had flags in them, um, like those little post-it flags of recipes that I've tried, that I liked, that I was, um, you know, going back and using, but it was just like a few recipes per book and like each book was like this thick. So it was just kind of taking up a lot of space. And every time I wanted to try a brand new recipe, I was never going to my recipe books. I was always going online to look at new recipes and look at the uh, reviews and ratings and picking based on what had high ratings and high reviews. Um, because picking a recipe out of a book, there's no reviews, there's maybe a review in the whole book, but not each individual recipe, at least like the books that I have. So um, yeah, so I felt like I was never really using the books. So now that I've set those aside, um, I have one binder and that's where I have all my recipes. So um, let me grab the binder and show you guys exactly what I've done. Okay, so this is my recipe binder. So as you can see, it's the uh, Staples brand binder from Staples. I always use the same binders for every binder project I do, because um, I like to keep it consistent and these are just my favorite ones. So I picked yellow because it's for the kitchen, it's for recipes, and every time I think of the kitchen I always think of the color yellow, so I don't know, I just thought it was perfect to, to get a yellow one. So I called it Favorite Recipes because I'm only keeping favorite my favorite recipes that I actually use. Um, nothing else will stay inside this binder. So if I make a recipe and I don't like it, I'm not going to save the recipe. These, these are just ones that are tried, tested, and I like them. So in the very front cover I put um, scrapbook paper to kind of dress it up a little bit, and I put um, this is like frosting and sprinkled scrapbook paper. I just thought it was cute and the yellow sprinkles match the yellow binder. Okay, so inside the binder I have my favorite Avery color-coded dividers that I've shown in other videos. Um, I just thought they were perfect for the recipe binder because they have 10 tabs and I came up with 10 categories. So it just worked out really nicely. So appetizers, soup salads, pasta, side dishes, main dish, meat, chicken, seafood, marinades, dessert breads, and then drinks. Um, now I love these dividers because they're really sturdy. I like how it has the table of contents in the very front so you can create labels. Now of course you could just write the labels on here, but I feel like it's just neater and cleaner with a label maker. So I just went ahead and labeled each of the sections. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you guys what's behind one of these sections. So I'm gonna show you the dessert section since I love dessert. I much prefer to bake than cook, like any day. Um, okay, so the first two recipes here, I'm gonna take this out, are two four by six index cards, like recipe cards. Um, so what I did here was I took all of the index cards and I put them inside these sheet protectors made to hold index cards. So these are from Office Depot. I think they came in three by five. Um, I didn't buy them because I don't really have any three by fives, I just have four by six. So this is nice, it holds two cards in one. So they are from Office Depot. Um, the second thing I want to show you are like printed recipes from the internet. So every time I print a recipe, or every time I, I'm going to make something, I'll print the recipe on a just 8.5 by 11 size, and then I'll make it, and then if I like the recipe, then I'll put it inside one of these sheet protectors and then put it inside the binder. If I don't like the recipe, I'm not going to keep it. Um, so this is my favorite banana, bre banana bread recipe. It is the best banana bread ever. I always make this... Um, just like whenever I'm making banana bread, it's just so good. You can see how good it is because it's like so dirty. You can tell um, how I'm always using this recipe. But now that it's inside the sheet protector, it's not going to get dirty. So before it was not in sheet protectors. Um, but something cool about the sheet protector is that it closes at the very top. Um, so let me show you guys. It's not just like a traditional sheet protector that is open at the top. It has this extra flap here that closes on top of the opening so the sheet doesn't come out. And this sheet protector is actually a lot sturdier than just your traditional sheet protectors. This is a traditional sheet protector. It's kind of flimsy. Um, it's open at the very top so the page can easily slip out. This one on the other hand is just sturdy and nicer. They're from Office Depot um, and yeah, they're from Office Depot. and. They are just really nice, so I'm really happy with that. Okay, so that's the 8.5 by 11. These are all 8.5 by 11s also. 
Okay, so there's one more thing I wanted to share with you guys. So um, these dividers, you know, I told you guys, they're Avery color-coded, the 10-tab dividers. But there's something here that you're probably not going to realize until you try doing this. Um, do you see how the sheet protector is in line with the dividers? Like, they don't go over the dividers, so like you can still see the dividers. That's because these dividers are the extra wide dividers, so extra wide ready index dividers. The bottom at the bottom you'll see that it says extra wide dividers have tabs that extend beyond sheet protectors. Now, if you used the normal um, Avery color coded ones, then you'll see that the sheet protectors, you see how they go beyond the dividers because they're so big. Um, so once you have a paper in here, it's just going to cover the divider. So um, so you want to make sure to get the extra wide ones. Now, I have never seen the extra wide dividers, these ones I just showed you guys. I've never seen them inside the store. You have to get them online. Um, Amazon has them, or you can order them online through Staples, but I've never seen them inside the actual Staples store. So that's just like an FYI lesson learned. Um, see, I, before I did this, I went here and I labeled all my dividers and then I put in my sheet protectors and then I was like, oh man, it doesn't fit. I was so upset because I feel like now I just need to cover over these, um, but I can still reuse them. So yeah, so that's just like a lesson learned if you, um, if you decide to set up the binder like this. And so in the back of the binder, I just have empty recipe cards or blank recipe cards. Um, so in case I need to grab one and write a recipe down, I could just grab um, these ones. So, and actually, you know, I was looking for recipe cards because I ran out of them and I got these ones on Amazon. It's so hard to find like cute recipe cards. These were the cutest ones I found that, um, that had like clear, clean lines to write on and didn't have like too much stuff in the way where you couldn't write very much stuff. So I found these ones on Amazon and I'm pretty happy with them. I wish they were a little bit brighter. They're kind of... They're kind of, well, they're not dull, but I just wish they were brighter. Okay, and so, and then in the very back of the binder, I have one of these um, gusseted binder pockets um, that go inside binders that I showed you guys in my warranty and manual binder. So what I did here was I moved my slow cooker manual from the warranty and manual binder to this binder because I feel like I'm keeping this binder in the kitchen with, um, like in one of my cabinets. And so this is the slow cooker manual that has like temperatures in it and cooking times and stuff. And sometimes I don't always remember that stuff. So I want to have access to this. So I'm keeping it in the kitchen. And then this little booklet here belongs to my food scale. I don't really use my food scale too often, but when I do, um, this book has all the codes to measure stuff and to um, like, yeah, see how many calories things have and stuff. Okay, so that's everything I wanted to share with you guys about my recipe binder. So like I mentioned before, this binder only has recipes that I like, enjoy, taste good. Um, anything, like any recipe that I try that I don't like, I'm not going to put it inside this binder. This is only stuff that I use, my favorite recipes. Um, and like I mentioned in the very beginning of this video, so I had recipe books, but I felt like I wasn't using them. Like I was just going online and printing recipes from the internet. Um, so I figured, why am I keeping these recipe books? I'm not even using them. So I went ahead and I uh, photocopied the recipes that I did like from those recipe books, and then I put them inside sheet protectors inside this binder, um, and then just set aside those recipe books. Okay, so that's how I'm organizing all my recipes inside one binder, nothing more. Um, everything is together. It's easy to um, to flip through, to go through, to find exactly what I'm looking for when I'm about to cook. Um, I hope this I hope this tip was helpful. If you have a another idea of how you organize recipes and you want to share it, leave a comment below or create a video response and show us exactly what you do. I would love to see, and I'm sure everyone else watching would love to see as well. So that is everything I have for you guys. I will see you soon. Bye.